Hello all of you YouTube people and welcome to On to the Next Project. My name is George and today we are going to be talking about the bumper on my 2013 Chevy Camaro. My apologies for this video being a slideshow, but I did this project about three months ago and did not figure on making a YouTube channel, but here we are. So hopefully somebody can get some help from this. If you own one of these cars, which is why I assume you are watching this video, then you know that, there, that the front facade on these is mostly plastic and is very susceptible to damage from any range of things. Mine got damaged by two things, actually. A rabbit caused the main part of the damage, and it looked to be pretty superficial. However, it did break some plastic on the underside and made it sag, and I didn't really notice it. You'll, you can see it with these photos. The, the two main bolts there, they got loose, and that entire thing decided to sag. Well, these vehicles, they're low clearance to begin with, and the second part that really did it in for this bumper was it got caught on a concrete stop out in front of a convenience source. So here we are. Now there are a lot of great removal videos on YouTube for getting one of these bumpers off so I don't really need to cover that. The main point of this video is to show you what I did and show you that it's possible. Now, I'm not saying you should go out and do this. You are an adult and you can make up your mind and anything you do with your car is not my fault. Now, getting into it after the bumper is removed, if you already have the damaged bumper, you need to pay attention to those wheel well liners. Mine had been broken loose and from having driving it around, it had been eaten away by the tires. Now, if you're replacing the bumper, then make sure to check these out as well. And if you need to replace them, now's a good time to order them if you're already getting a bumper. So you can order these things online nowadays. You will need the paint code and the paint name to put in the form whenever you order these things. Mine was found under the mat in the trunk. That's usually where they are on the Camaros. So if you're having trouble finding it, look there. Now, after I ordered my replacement bumper and wheel well liners, I kept my old bumper as a template so that I wouldn't mind getting it scratched as I was doing the work around it because it's getting replaced. It's, it's junk afterwards. So might as well make it useful since the other one's gonna be exactly like it. Now, we needed to get down to something solid on the car since it's a unibody, and on all cars, since the fronts are mostly plastic, they have this impact bar. This is actually what takes the force whenever you get into an accident or a collision. Most police push bars that you see on Impalas or Crown Vics are mounted to the impact bar in some way, so that is what I attach to. I used a laser level to get some measurements for the openings in the grills. It was a great tool to use as long as you have a flat surface to park on so you have some nice clean measurements. As for the material, I used some 5 inch wide flat bar that was a quarter inch thick for the mounting brackets. I bent those and then reinforced the bend areas with welds. On the main body of the bumper, I used 2 inch by 4 inch by 3 16 wall rectangular tubing. For the railing around the top of the bumper, I used inch and a quarter schedule 40 pipe. This pipe, I recommend that you clean it off before you start on a project like this. There's a lot of oil and protective layers on regular steel pipe to prevent it from rusting, and it can make it difficult so just take some time and some paint stripper to the pipe and wipe it down, get it nice and clean. It will really help you a lot. Now, I'm not saying anything bad about auto body part distributors, but I was rather upset when I got my wheel well liners just bundled up and bubble wrapped and then sent through the mail. They worked, but you have to lay them out in the sun and let them heat up a bit to get the creases out and get them back to their semi-original shape. Here you can see that I had my brackets made that hold the bumper. I drilled through my impact bar and installed them with some 5 8 grade 8 bolts. 
I had considered welding my brackets onto the impact bar because the impact bar can re be replaced for about $250, but in the end, I figured drilling it and bolting it on would be plenty stout, but any welder out there will tell you, you can always weld it. So if you're considering doing this, that is an option because it is just metal. Now that I have my mounts for the bumper, I could start building the actual steel bumper. I figured the front angle of the car and matched that with the piece of two inch by four inch rec tubing and then cut and tacked my angled vertical risers on. Now the angled risers are actually what hold the bumper to the car. You wanna make sure that every cut you do is symmetrically opposed. So I recommend doing all your cuts in twos when you're building something like this. For the mounting tabs, I use two inch by quarter inch angle iron cut off to fit on those mounting brackets and tacked those onto my vertical risers when I got it clamped where I want it. Now I also need to mention that I use TIG welding here. To do this, I did not want any extra sparks getting away from me and getting on somewhere on the car that would cause potential damage. I picked an angle on the tops of the risers that I liked and cut them off to give it a more aggressive look. After that, I started to fill in the space between the two vertical risers with the inch and a quarter Sked 40 pipe. I matched the angle of the front of the car again and made sure to follow the body lines not to block the radiator as much as possible. So basically where there's already solid bumper instead of the grill inserts, I installed the pipe. Then I played with the angles for the wraparound of the bumper and ended it right before the wheel well on each side trying to protect the entire bumper. I also stopped there so that if I was in a side impact, then theoretically it wouldn't force it into the tire. Now, any welder out there knows that whenever you're doing a big project like this with a lot of tight tolerances, then you need to spread out your welds to prevent things from warping or drawing so that everything fits whenever you go to install it. So I basically broke this bumper down into two main weld outs. I started working on my corner risers that were made of the pipe as well and used a couple cut down 90 degree fittings welded on top of the pipe to complete the angle and wrap it around the sides of the car. I mitered the pieces to fit up against the rec tube on the flat side and then it was just the straight cut on the butt weld end of the fittings. Then I angled it down with a mitered cut and a 45 for the wraparound on the sides. I added the pipe in the spaces in between to protect the fog lights and that was it. After I liked where it was all tacked and how it looked, I did my second weld out. When it was cool and I felt like I was finished welding on the bumper, I started my cleanup process. That meant removing all the rough edges or sharp points and smoothing it down so that nothing looked too gnarly. Then wipe it down with acetone and it's ready to go to paint. So actually before it goes to paint, I decided to go ahead and do one more quick dry run on it just to make sure everything fit and worked properly like I intended it to. I also took it back off and did a quick weighing of the bumper and it came out just under 100 pounds without paint. Now I'm not a fan of painting, I do not have fun with it or enjoy it, but I ended up putting about 12 coats of paint on this thing, shooting it lightly over about five hours on a 75 degree day. Again, a lot of videos on YouTube, a lot better than mine for painting, who are people that are professional at it, and I recommend you look at those videos because I'm a pipe fitter, not a painter. So after I got done painting it, I let it set up for about a week in my shop Afterwards, I put some decals on the front. Whenever I bought the car, I named her Phoenix, for those of you who were wondering what the Phoenix was. And just for some added fun, I put the rabbit killer on there. She won't take out a deer, but Peter Cottontail needs to think twice about going down my trail. Finally, the new replacement bumper came, and it looked like I was smuggling dead bodies in my truck. Not too discreetly either. 
Again, I was not really happy with how the online store shipped my bumper. I figured it would have come in a box or at least something more protective. But again, it was just bubble wrapped and shipped. There were several of the guide pins that were bo broke and the mounting bracket hole was just gone whenever I got it unwrapped. Plus, it looked super squished, but again, you put it out in the sun, it heats up, and it makes getting the plastic pieces in there easier because then the plastic you're working with is more pliable to get your grills and all your inserts back in there properly. I'm not condoning it or trying to make excuses for these companies, but this is what happened to me, so it's your risk. You might consider going through a dealership, but it probably won't be any cheaper. Overall, I think I had $600 in the bumper with the paint matching and then another $150 in the wheel well liners. But that's why I decided to build a bumper because I didn't want to hit another rabbit and have to do all this again. So I remounted the brackets for the steel bumper on the impact bar, torqued those down. I slid my new unbroken, well, um, new not broken by a rabbit plastic bumper over the mounts and installed that. Now I do need to add that it is much easier to install the plastic bumper by taking off the front wheels. If you are replacing the wheel well liners as well, Taking off one tire at a time will save you a lot of headache whenever you're putting this bumper back on. Then, all that was left was installing the new Rabbit Killer 3000 and hitting the road. I hope you enjoyed the video slideshow on my 2013 Chevy Camaro bumper. Please like and subscribe if you did not already. We will be adding more stuff to our channel as soon as we can that are actual videos and shenanigans. So please stay tuned and until we get on to the next project. Thanks guys.